Hello and welcome to the Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and the Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have or have had an association with Oshkosh or the surrounding Fox Valley area. Um, how's everybody out there doing? I'm super excited about today's guest. Um, you know, I always say that, but uh, like, I'm I'm pretty serious about it. Um, you know what? Because I think this show, I usually like to uh, get one intro gripe in. I'm not even going to get my intro gripe in or what I got to say, because you know what? This show is going to be fire, just straight fire. There's energy in the room. It's going to be a good time. And so without further ado, this week's guest is Will Achmiker. Oh, I just see. Oh see. man, you're in. You're putting letters in there. I, I did. It. I did. I just slaughtered it all. If it's any consolation, you're you're probably one of one point five million people that have messed that up. So that's totally okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, we're gonna try it again. No, I'm not gonna try it again. How do we properly say it? <laughs> I'm, I'm Ocker. I'm Ocker. Yep, you got it. You know, here's the funny thing, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all know that I have slaughtered about three quarters of all my guests. Uh, names at some point in time and I even phonetically wrote it out and even phonetically I still slaughtered it so what does that say about me uh you know everyone's penmanship is different you're in the moment I'm not blaming you I've uh, gotten I'm, in my lifetime I've gotten uh Amchester Amchester um, Amaches Ooh. uh armchair armchair all mocker oh people like putting an r in there r mocker mm. um I think the traditional German was there was an H at the front, mm. but I don't know. Maybe all munchies. Uh, if if you pronounce it amateur, you're not too far off. There we go. So well, yeah, yeah. That, that was my uh, that was my break dancing name. Will what? Will Amateur, Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't touching that. Yep. <laughs> we all had one. We all had. <laughs> we all own some parachute pants and, and a break dancing name at some point. I'm still wearing my pants. They're extremely comfortable. Oh yeah, they're perfect they size for my for my for my body type. Oh, for the frame, <laughs> it, it fits right. Huh? Yep, absolutely. You know what? At some point, they're gonna make a comeback. They honestly, they kind of they kind of are. Uh, the it seems the jogger is becoming a little more. Uh, Flared out, so I th- I think it's close. If it's not already happening, you think so? Yep. I I'm trying to find the joggers with the cargo pockets. Um, you know, I I I I've, I don't have the use for the cargo anymore these no. days. Uh, I feel like I'm if I'm if I'm carrying a little extra gear, it's probably in a hoodie. Oh, that's I true. My, I got my car hurt here. Oh yeah. Um, the hoodie is solid. Uh, which is so beat up, the zippers broke off. So. Let's just say I was on that trend. You are on that trend. Um, but, uh, <laughs> hey, bruh. Oh, you already know what's happening right now, y'all. Uh, Bosco, the podcast dog, is sitting here uh, milking all the belly rubs he can from Will. The fact that I showed up and didn't know that there was a dog here and heard a dog barking, in my head, I was like, please let this dog be part of the podcast somehow. Oh, yeah. And I'm petting the heck out of him right now. He's a great guy. I hope yeah. he's cool with, like, an hour of getting petted because that's happening, bud. Actually, uh, you might end up taking him home with you if you keep that up because that is who he is. My wife has casually leaned on me for a third dog for quite a long time, but we occasionally will dog sit our my sister in law's dog Shakti, who's a, a pit bull. She's about forty pounds, mm-hmm. and a third dog is chaos from two. Oh, I believe that it is. First off, you don't have enough hands to pet. A, a dog at a time. Right. So you're pretty much doing like a wax on, wax off per dog really fast. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> really fast. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm extremely pro dog, pro pet. Uh, it just seems like when we're hanging out at a place with, uh, with a pet, they're usually finding the warmest guy in the room, and that's occasionally me. No, so that's how that goes, I guess. That's not that bad of a person to be. No. Nope. Uh, they, know, they know who the good folks are. In a state where it's winter for seven and a half months a year, I'll, I'll, take, uh, I'll take the extra warmth, I guess. Um, facts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we're going to jump in. So, Will, can you please share a little something about yourself, and uh, what's your connection to the Kosh? Absolutely. So, I am from West Bend, Wisconsin, originally, a little bit... Uh, pretty much between Oshkosh and uh, Milwaukee. Uh, it's a nice town, um, but uh, once I 
Graduated college 2004. I came up to Oshkosh to go to UW Oshkosh. Um, took me a little bit to pick majors, as uh, I suppose most folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, Understatement. Uh, yeah, radio, TV, film, and uh, journalism. Uh, met a lot of great people there. I accurately joke it was uh, just the foot in the door I needed to get into uh, bar and restaurant management. <laughs> right. So that's uh, that's how life works out, I guess. It, well, yeah, most definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been here up here since 2004. Um, met my wife uh, working uh, working at the Gap, the Fox River Mall, folding denim together. Oh, um, you were that dude. That's how that goes, man. Yep, definitely, definitely full of crisp pair of jeans. Let's put it that way. Does uh, Gap commercials uh, put a little tear in your eye? You know, I never really enjoyed the the ad campaigns. I appreciate the, all those. Uh, all those uh, dancers got work, um, but uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, mm. I always enjoyed the gap because they cover the big man well, and um, yeah, if I you know ended up meeting my wife out of it too, so it worked out pretty well. Facts. Okay, I can appreciate that. Heck yeah! All right, um, first segment. What in the world is going on with? That's where you start off with the statement. What in the world is going on with? And you tell us what's on your mind. Uh, just the sheer potential of this question. I thought about this one possibly the most out of all of your little, all of your bullet points, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Proteus, which is a project being worked on right now by Jacques Cousteau's grandson. I uh, believe Fabian. I'm sure I'm saying that correctly because I just enjoy saying that name. Uh He's basically working on a a project called Proteus, which is essentially going to be an underwater, the underwater equivalent of the International Space Station. So there, the first one is getting, is being built off of Curacao, which is off the coast of Venezuela. And I guess their plan is to build them all over the ocean floor to where they're going to be able to digitally map out the ocean. Now, this is cool for a lot of reasons, if I have to say anything beyond that. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, one, one thing that uh, it just, uh, a movie that always stuck with me when I first saw it as a kid was uh, The Abyss and uh, kind of a similar scenario. Uh, just uh, ocean exploration was always a point of intrigue for me. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Uh, scuba diving, though, not really my, my lungs can't do it though. So that's, uh, that's how that, that works, I guess. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I thought that was really rad. Uh, this guy's been, uh, he is, uh, an aquanaut, which is an underwater astronaut, which has to be one of the most baller jobs that I can think of offhand. That, that does sound baller. Like, uh, why don't they tell you about that in college? Dude, uh, if I knew Aquanaut was a thing, I'm, I'm, you know, my life would be very different probably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, you know, oh, you scuba dive? Cool, man. I am an Aquanaut. I can't even imagine how you could uh, use that one at cocktail parties. Oh, no, that, that would change the game. Like yeah. if somebody just was like, oh, so you scuba dive? No, mm. I am an aquanaut. Not trying to game kill, but it's my path. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Call me doctor. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, right, and it's doctor. Exactly. Awesome. No. Uh, but yeah, so I thought that was kind of a cool story. Um, uh, just uh, further ocean exploration. Uh, just a cool aspect of science that I was always been interested in. So that one, that, that's been blowing my mind lately. All right. All right, my what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with people with their gold Brandon hats Mm. at events. And I'm going to say specifically sporting events. Mm. And then the national anthem comes on and you pull the hat off and put it over your heart. Now, there's so many things wrong with that whole visual. I, man... Do you feel me on that? I mean, uh, and I'm not saying you got to. I'm just saying, I, like, I have to say, I couldn't possibly be more on page with you, a hundred percent. I think it's asinine. Uh, it's annoying. Uh, the fact that uh, one thing happens and then the other, right? Uh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, the one thing that the, here's the thing that ticks me off. I'm not gonna say 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 it on your amazing pg podcast uh, <laughs> but 
what they originally were saying, and I'm sure most of us know the phrase already, just say it. Just say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if that's what you're going for, just say the swear. Say the thing, you know? Yes. This, 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 this weird little side, funky little code thing. It's like got to be really cool to Elks Lodge, man. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just... That's my two cents on that. Yeah. My problem with it is just, look, I don't I don't care what your politics are, right? I've got good friends on both sides of the aisle, and me personally, I try to go with the what I think is the, uh, me personally, I try to stay in the logic makes sense place, mm-hmm. right? I'm not picking a team. Mm-hmm. I'm picking people who I trust and believe in. But this isn't even a political statement. What I'm just saying is the irony and in, in what it signifies, mm-hmm. right? And and my thing is this, look, I've had presidents I've loved, I've had presidents I've not liked so much, yep. right? But at the end of the day, I'm not doing something so contradictory about it because at the end of the day, I love the country. Mm-hmm. And so it's a team game. It's a team. You know, the last time I checked, the national anthem is about unity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It's a, it's a, it, the whole idea of doing it before events is a unity thing. And so you do all the things you're supposed to do. You take your hat, you pull it off, you put it over your heart, but your hat that you have is basically saying... Disparaging the thing that you're saluting, kind of. Yeah, well, at least one of the... the, the an aspect the, of it. The, uh, an aspect of it in the main representative in leadership of yep. it. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's almost like saying, okay, I want to celebrate the country, but the person who's tasked with... Being in charge of it at this time, I'm just going to totally forget them. Yeah, um, and and that's and, and look, I I'm not about this. Isn't a political statement. Yep, this is about consistency. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't gotta like everybody, but at least be consistent for what you so called say you're standing with for. your messaging. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yep, because part of it is sort of like frat boy humor and part of it is you know showing some admiration for your country and it's kind of hard mixing the two and taking that seriously right it just one undercuts the other and i it was something that i witnessed and i just didn't even know how to feel about it Mm -hmm. like it just gave me such mixed emotions um yeah, so that that that's my uh, what in the world was going on with for this week. I'm gonna let that topic go because, uh, but I do want, cash listeners, I want you to really think about that, really think about that because that hits different. I went I went little kid with mine, and you went big kid with yours. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just think you know what I think we just represented a whole lot. Yep, there you go. Yeah, nice. All right, next segment. Word associations. All right, this is where I say a word, and you tell me what comes to your mind. First few words are the same. We changed the last couple. First word, food. Brunch. Ooh. Uh, if I could have one, if I could have one meal, that uh, you know, desert island. It's it's brunch. You can do anything with brunch. I'm gonna have to agree with that statement. Uh, you know, I know it's I know it's a weekend thing, um, but uh. Why can't brunch can be seven days a week? It you, could be. You, you can have breakfast breakfast stuff whenever. You can throw in a chicken and waffles thing. Oh, oh! Why are you doing that to me? Uh, I'm Bruh. doing. It, know that I'm doing it to myself. I haven't eaten much today, and oh. uh, I if if my stomach isn't picked up by this microphone, I think it's. I'm going to call that a W. The fair, fair yeah. enough, mm-hmm. fair enough. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I found what I think is probably one of the best brunches in the cash. Mm. And that is over there at four 30. That brunch yep. is fire. Uh, you know, they, uh, they work really hard over there. Uh, those guys are kind of, um, uh, work with them, uh, through my, uh, position at the Gibson. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just knowing those guys, uh, or that, that crew over there, they work pretty hard and, Especially during farmers markets, they get bust, oh, yeah. they get busted. Oh yeah, they get I, they get beat up. Uh, I do not I do not envy them during their their brunches. Oh yeah, that's a good brunch though. That's actually going to lead into something a little bit later in this that I'm that I'm glad uh, the way you structured that because a I'm a mass I'm, I'm a food guy big time. 
Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of those, what does the kosh need? Ooh. Yeah, that's oh. gonna, we're going to circle back to that one. We're going to circle back to that. Okay, yep. well, then I got to, well, since you brought up brunch, what's your favorite? You got a favorite brunch around? Uh, man, if we're talking Fox Valley, and if, if yeah. you know, we, if I, we can go Fox City. If, if, if time, you know, if, if, we're, if we're talking local and ones that I've gotten most in my life, uh, probably the Roxy, um, just because I seem to, you know, I've been going there for most of my life, whether visiting Oshkosh as a little kid or um, now my wife and I live like basically a bottle rockets distance away from the, from the Roxy. So Sunday brunch, the Roxy, um, hard to beat their prime ribbon eggs. That's been my go-to. That was my, that was the brunch I had the morning before the Packers won the Super Bowl. So that's always, uh, that's been a, that's been a big one. Um, uh, another one that, uh, I mean, people know about it at this point, but uh, anytime uh, you can get up to Sap and Appleton's on occasion too. Oh, I just found out about that place. Um, it's uh, my wife is uh, lived most of her life in Appleton, uh, and uh, when that opened up, we've been you know anytime we can when anytime we can make time to get up there, we will. And um, yeah, just uh, Fox Valley could do much worse as far as breakfast places. This or, is true. Or brunch spots. Yes. But it seems like there's never enough still, if that makes sense. Yes. I'm just going to give two more shout outs on the breakfast tip. Not so mm-hmm. much the brunch tip. I got to give one out to two brothers because y'all, two brothers is the trusty. Yep. Like, you, you can't. Meat, it, meat lover's skillet is yeah. an art. It, that's a, a work of art. It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know what you're getting. It's the same every time. I've been going there for as long as I can ever remember being mm-hmm. in the cash and, and they do it right. And then there's Mike's place. Uh, I get to Mike's place. I don't get there enough, but let's just say that I will now that we're talking about it. Yeah. Well, you know, Mike's place, I have an aspiration with Mike's place is I want to become one of those seniors that sit in there and read the paper and hang out. There's a, mm-hmm. there's like a table of, 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 of those people. Dude, it's that place. That, uh, that is a, um, you know, in the, the later, later stages, that seems to be a pretty big, uh, pretty big, uh, System is the the early morning breakfast paper system. Bruh. Facts. I feel it like, is. I feel like that was that was one that was definitely. I mean, everything was thrown off from uh, from COVID, but mm-hmm. uh, I did think it was kind of kind of wild seeing your uh, your your older crowd getting together in those in the parking lots and doing it that way. Hey, you know what? You can't break it up. Nope. No, nah, that's tradition. Yep. I was gonna say another another breakfast one too. That's gotten tons of my time and money is uh Polora's. Oh. You know what? I've never gone. Uh you Oh no, I'm wrong. That's, oh, I'm wrong. All right. Definitely that's make that a goal. This is a goal? Yeah, big time. All right. And you know, Polora's if you hear me out there, you know, A, you should come be on the cash and B, um, you know, a little invite for breakfast, I'll be there. <laughs> Truck, they're they're in my shout outs, don't worry. All right. Um, cocktail or beer? Uh, man, uh, when I would, when I hear cocktail, I think livelihood, that's kind of been the game for about 15 years. Okay. When I think beer, I think, um, uh, well, I think barley wine is life. Currently having a fifth ward, big Willie style barley wine. Mm, uh, bruh. Can I get you, can I get a cheers? Can oh, a cheers he does this? get a cheers because here's the part he didn't tell you. I'm having one too. <laughs> yep, yep. We're uh, we're enjoying uh, a big Willie style, but uh, yeah, I would say uh, I would say I would say a hobby or um, enthusiasm for for beers. Mm. It's always been something that um, you know, friends and friends and uh, very early on in college, some of my best guys uh, were big beer heads, and were brewing stuff with their dad, and um, from home homebrew trying homebrew batches to going to beer fest to. Brewery memberships to doing beercations. It's pretty much beercations. Beercations, man. There's all kinds of good beer cities in this country. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not, if you enjoy an adult beverage and are of age, uh, definitely include that in your plan. Sometimes, man. You know what? I think I got a neighbor up the street, and well, I shouldn't say probably. I know I do. His name, <laughs> uh, Tom Hitman. Tom Hitman has a group, and you know what? I do believe they even have beer shirts, kind of like bowling shirts, and they go and they travel and they try different beers out. So shout out to my man Tom Hitman uh, out there. 
Uh, yeah, he's totally that dude. So beer occasions, but I never understood it. But I just saying the two. I mean, you know, for example, my wife and I have gone to Seattle uh, a couple times now, and I mean, it's not like we're going there specifically for, to drink beer. But uh, as far as beer cities go, Seattle's damn fine. Uh, yeah. You can pretty much spin in a circle. Uh, but uh, good food scene over there, and uh, um, that's one thing that's kind of been cool about uh, craft beer scene, at least in the uh, in the era of social media, is the networking opportunities. At this point, it feels like just from cracking jokes and doing a, a trade or two, and I feel like I almost know everybody or people in almost every state that you could hang out with occasion. So sometimes that, uh, that's a really cool part of it too. Facts. Yep. All right. Streaming. Man, streaming. I guess we're just thinking about, uh, media that we're taking in, uh, things that I'm streaming most often lately have been, uh, audible, mm. uh, just, oh. just absolutely crushing audiobooks. Yeah. Uh, my wife, my wife just wrecks books. She is just, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll never read as many books as she has, but, uh, since about last June, I gave audible a try. And, uh, just because I like the mobility of it, I'm much more of a hands-free headphones guy than hold a book, walk around kind of a dude. Yeah. You know, then I'm, then I'm able to enjoy one thing while I'm, you know, walking the dogs or doing dishes or playing a game of FIFA. Uh, that's probably my favorite video game. I just absolutely crush in FIFA. Bruh. Oh, that's, don't get the that, soccer players started now, a, man, because you already know. That's an open challenge. Anyone seriously, come come get me. Let's do a little. Let's, Bro, let's I'll, look, I'll crank some up for 90s. No problem. All of a sudden, I'm not going to lie. I feel like my uh, daughter's boyfriend is going to show up because they live that life. That's it, you know, and he, wait, he's fin. He's just at that point of graduating from college, so you know what he's been doing for the last four years. Uh, FIFA, yeah. FIFA is life. Yep, that's, uh, you know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely with that. Uh, hundred percent. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, no audible or, uh, just audiobooks in general. I think since, since last June, I, I've done over a month's worth of reading as far mm-hmm. as like, like time duration, which is kind of wild. I don't really think like, you don't really think about it, but just buzzing through stuff like, yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy or Stephen King's The Stand. Um, I did, uh, what Jurassic Park, Lost World and, uh, now I'm doing the Wheel of Time series, which is uh, a significant nerd rabbit hole. If you're into Lord of the Rings type stuff, I am. Uh, definitely dig it, man. It's I think it's a 12 book series. I'm on book five, and I think I started in December. So that's been that's been going pretty well. And they're they're basically like Bible thick. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like audiobooks. Uh, I, I I learn better. Yep. Auditorily, mm-hmm. and I do believe is the term. Yep. Um. So I and but I. I haven't been able to bring myself to pay that 15 bucks a month. Uh, man, that's one thing that, uh, as a bachelor, I literally, I don't know, didn't really give, give two craps about, uh, but budgeting something my wife, my wife does very well. And I just try and try and keep up with that. So that's one of those things where, you know, I just, that's one less trip to Hardee's that month. That's true. I'd rather listen to, rather listen to books than, you know, and cook an extra meal at home, if that makes it, sense. That is, you know what? You do got to think about it like that sometimes, mm-hmm. and, and I'm not going to lie. Why is it? You know what? I'm just going to have this uh, really fast gripe about the fact, like, uh, you know, you can't go to Hardee's nowadays and get anything for less than about $12. And if you throw a soda and everything, it, it is literally like a $15 meal. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's not, I mean, man. I feel like there's there's so many topics we're getting into that could be their own podcast in the so, in, in, in themselves. <laughs> but yeah, pricing right. pricing in general feels like uh, wow. When did everything go up twenty percent? You know, mm. and um, there's everyone that has different kinds of uh, uh, theories on that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just feel like I remember a lot of blank checks being written directly to the stock market that could have affected that, but. Uh, you know, I yeah. don't know. I, I, that's just one. That's just one aspect on that one. I think you might be. Uh, you might have been uh, paying attention. Yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of people that will lean towards you know the checks that people are getting to try and survive and blaming those things. Yeah, but that's a little upsetting to me. Yeah, you know, me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. Because here's my problem with that. If I remember right, there were these. Um, the money usually never gets to the little man. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the everyday dude. Nope. That's very few times. The people who create laws and policies and stuff, the the struggle, the people who are in the struggle. And there's a lot more people in the struggle than people even admit because the struggle picks up a lot of people that don't want to put themselves in lower class. So they, yep. they, they frame themselves as middle class, but no, mm-hmm. they're struggling. Yep. Paycheck, paycheck. And last time I checked, I don't remember a whole lot of things being done for them. I don't, I've never heard a tax cut for them. Yeah, you know. Um, I and, just, and, the, I'm, and you know what? I pay attention. I feel like my taxes come out. I feel like I feel like my taxes are paid every year, you know? I'm yeah. Just, you know? Well, the fact that you got to pay some. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was, no, I was going to say, and I, I, I know that's... Uh, that is, uh, that's that, what I was going to say. That is checked up on. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, um, we won't get into it. We won't dig deep, deep in that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I agree with you. Sometimes it's hard being like, Damn, I feel like last year that was like a fifteen dollar decision, not a twenty dollar decision, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, again, budgeting, budgeting. Yep. Um, shop local. Uh, imperative. Uh, if you are someone who believes in uh, uh, just the general American dream, uh, you need to support your. Local uh, business owners, however possible. Um, sometimes it's easier to uh, do that Amazon purchase versus going to buy that book locally, but spend that extra dollar, uh, dollar or two. Um, it's worth it. Uh, not only is it important locally, uh, just economically, but uh, the you're meeting it. You're meeting more people. Uh, you're interacting with more people. I know sometimes it's it's hard these days uh, getting out like it used to be uh, pre-COVID. Um, so I do understand that. I definitely understand that. Uh, but anytime you can uh, spend that dollar locally versus versus nationally, nationally, you absolutely should do it. Absolutely. I'm big on that because there's a lot of local asks. Mm-hmm. And the local small business... Um, in a lot of cases, are the people who actually sponsor the things. They're the things that keep, you know, they're the ones that make the softball team T-shirt look good or the yep. the uh, youth soccer league jerseys uh, happen and, and, and all of the other many, many things. So I'm huge on the shop local, um, support local. Uh, you know, high tide raises all ships. So yes. you, uh, you spend your money with... Uh, you know, with a plan and, um, you know, along the lines, we were talking about this pre-show, you spend your money that lines up with your philosophy and your tastes yes. and you go from there. Yes. 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 Um, pets. Man, to say in one word what my pets mean to me is just an impossibility. Um, but uh, my two dogs, Jack and Bowie, are... Uh, Oh man. Just like my guys, my dudes. Yeah. Um, you know, um uh, always there for you. We've I've we've had had cats growing up, but just at this point in my life where my wife and I are dog people. Um, you know, having someone rel- having something to rely on or something outside yourself that relies on you uh is uh you learn a lot about yourself. And uh, it's just cool uh, taking care of uh, another thing and watching them grow and be awesome, like little Bosco here. Sorry, buddy, I didn't pet you for about five minutes there. Uh, yes. He's Bos- like, I was sleeping, dude. That's okay. You can let me sleep. Jeez. <laughs> Bosco the dog. podcast dog is, um, he is totally about belly rubs. Uh, all all podcasts should have pets. I know some people aren't, uh, you know, there's a there's a pet out there for everyone, you know? Facts. If, uh, if you like spiders, if you like lizards, go, oh, yeah. uh, go find one at your local pet shop and help it grow. Mm. Love nice. pets. Nice. All right. And comedy. Uh, I would say, I would say release. Uh, I've been doing stand up in the Fox Valley since about 2014, 2013, 2014. Uh, my wife, uh, who 
man, now that I think about it, some of the bigger moves in my life has been my wife making a wager with me. So maybe I just have a deep, deep, <laughs> a deep thing with uh, with Bruh. big old with big old wagers. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, so you, you can't get away from that. You're gonna have to explain that. Uh, well, oh <laughs> man, uh, let me. Uh, so you put me in a position because the wager this one for for stand up was a was of a bedroom nature, and I'll just say that I <laughs> I did my end, and so did so did my wife. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, no, she basically just bet me, hey, uh, why, why don't you put together a, f- a five minute set and we'll see how it goes. And um, met a ton of people doing stand up uh, still to this day. Like these are some of my best friends. Um, shout out to people like uh, uh, Kyla Morris. She uh, put together the Backlot Comedy House. Uh, everybody from that crew, um, unfortunately, with COVID, you know, like a lot of things. Uh, kind of got bulldozed by you know, by by the by that whole scene. And, yeah, really did. Um, it's unfortunate, uh, but uh, again, backlot crew was guys like uh, Nick Brandle, Noah Totsky, Matt Kluge, uh, Eric Egan, um, Bridget Bridget Zhang's done, Cullen Dunn. Uh, those are these are like some of my best friends that you know you get to know. Uh, guys like Tyler Sitar. Um, People like uh, Lyle Sidney. Uh, Lyle's a dude who's come into uh, my radius in the last couple of years and uh, has put me on a couple of shows locally that have been just awesome. Uh, so it's just, uh, that's one thing that, I don't know, as far as like my philosophy goes, you, you try and meet as many people and befriend as many and build as many networks as, as, as big of a network as you can. Not for this, just for doing it or for the, for the, the clout, but to help someone if they need something and if they can help you to, to, to bring it full circle, you know? So, uh, so that's another aspect that's been great about, uh, uh, comedy is, uh, just meeting people from all different walks of life and telling jokes to to strangers. Is it hard? I mean, let me rephrase that because I just feel like anytime you get out in front of people and I'm, you know, in my in my profession, I get asked a lot to come and present and do things. And like, look, every time every time there's an ask, my there's a little bit of a pit in my stomach because it's not my comfortable space. Yeah, to get out and be so vulnerable in front of people. But comedy just seems like whoa, like you got to be pretty brave to even. I I there are there are people that. Ah oh, man, I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but there are people that absolutely earn that that title bravery, and I just I just don't I just don't think that applies to 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 me really. I I have always loved making people laugh. Uh, humor can erase a crappy day. Uh, can make you can give you a reprieve from you know something you're dealing with with personally with your family. Uh, just a little joke. Perfectly timed, perfectly executed. Yes, uh, just a dunk, an absolute Giannis, uh, Drew Holiday, uh, just dunk uh, is one of the best feelings on the planet. And of course, I'm talking about jokes. I can't actually dunk. I wish I could. That would be a top three genie wish for me. Uh, <laughs> seriously, 45 Thanks. inch vertical, dude. I would absolutely wreck dunks. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, but um, yeah, so. Um, I don't know. I've always been the kind of guy who's there sometimes at a fault uh, with a joke, but uh, and that's actually one thing that I don't know. Getting older, realizing that not everything has to be a joke, but still probably should be. <laughs> I I, um, I agree with that. Um, but uh, do we? Um, do you have a favorite comedian at all? Is there somebody that particular oh, that? You think is amazing or uh, kind of... If there's someone that ever made me think I could be funny, uh, it was probably Chris Farley. Mm. Uh, just because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not the only big Wisconsin dude that, uh, you know, laughed at him growing up. Uh, and I that was probably the first time I remember, like, crying about a celebrity dying. Uh, just because, I don't know, homie was really young and... Had a lot to give yet, but uh, beyond him, I would say guys like um, uh, George Carlin, uh, uh, Bill Hicks, uh, Ronnie Dangerfield, 
Um, Ooh, Rodney Dangerfield. That's a blast from the past. Yeah, when you got uh, when you got parents and grandparents that are movie buffs, you watch uh, all kinds of stuff growing up. So uh, Caddyshack was on regular rotation at family events, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, but newer guys like um, Z's on Sorry, uh, guys like uh, oh man, how am I drawing a blank on this? I, um, I do like him. Uh, TJ Miller, uh, Hannibal Burris. Uh, my wife and I have seen Hannibal Burris probably three or four times. Uh, one of which was at Bonnaroo uh, Music mm. Festival in Tennessee. Yeah, he was an MC for their Blues Super Jam, which was an absolutely mind blowing two hours of music. But excuse me, he <laughs> he came out after their like little little like mid mid show break. And he did the uh, lead vocal for uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Shining Star. What? And Bruh. oh, it was it was amazing. Uh, but uh, uh, I also saw uh, once saw a fight at a Hannibal. Almost saw almost saw a fight at a Hannibal Burr show. Uh, this uh, elderly woman was taking a call during the show on her phone, and I heard her clearly say, "What am I doing?" I'm watching your nephew do stand up. And I'm like, what? So this is like Hannibal Burris's aunt taking a cell phone call during his show. And there's some people behind him that didn't appreciate that too much, but it was still funny. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> and that was like unintentional humor, you know, that was like not part of the show. Uh, but, um, but yeah, uh, I would say those are definitely some of the guys that, uh, that make me laugh. And I mean, I'm there, there's a million, I'm forgetting, uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk, um, David Cross, uh, Brian Posehn, Patton Oswalt. Um, yeah, I'll pretty much take, I will take all comedy. I will, I'll take it all. Shout out to the comics. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. We're rolling into uh, the Kosh's Hidden Gems. So this is your opportunity to share something that you think is a hidden gem here in Oshkosh. Maybe it's something that everybody knows about, but they might not know the details of it and why it's so special. So what's your hidden gem? Uh, man, it's uh, it's hard to, that's that's a list. It's hard to narrow down because you want to give everyone their propers. Uh, but when I think about things in Oshkosh that make it special for me, I mean, um, the... The, uh, the the time theater uh, that's that's one that I've always appreciated um, just a place that isn't necessarily a, a big a big you know big box movie movie chain right uh, showing movies locally uh, when I first came to Oshkosh that was boarded up uh, it was just like a weird weird little thing and uh, that crew from the time theater has uh, turned it into a pretty cool spot over there and um, shout out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we um, uh, we sponsored a couple. Uh, my where I work, the uh, Gibson Social Club. Uh, it's a we uh, had a few uh, movies sponsored to them. One of which was one of my all time favorites, uh, The Shining. Uh, and oh, then we yeah. had a, a Shining Halloween party that was pretty rad too. Uh, but um, that's one that sticks on my mind. Of, you know, like a really cool. Uh, part of it's because, and now it's been read it. it Growing up in West Bend, we had a cool little theater like that that would play new movies, but also classics. Right. And uh, as a, a film guy from pretty much day one, uh, sneaking movies behind my parents or watching stuff that maybe we shouldn't have or, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Uh, you know. Uh, Facts. When you, when you tell your parents, yeah, I can watch that movie, and then that movie gives you uh, nightmares for a week, uh, that'll, that'll happen. But, um always been a movie guy so that's been a big deal for me um but um it's uh it's kind of hard to narrow down um you know the 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 hidden gems um uh places that you know like sort of off the beaten path or maybe not everybody knows about that like go to all the time uh uh Polaris. um oh I think that's a hidden gem. Dude, you got to got to go to Polaris. Uh, I don't know a, anyone who does not celebrate that place. It's um it's they work really hard there. Uh Corey, uh shout out to Corey Tellock and their crew over there. Um they bust it. They work really hard. They put out a pretty good product. 
uh, every time. Good coffee, uh, uh, <laughs> good good brunch. Circling back to brunch, man. That's it's a that's a Saturday spot. Uh, if they 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 aren't open on Sundays, they um, they do soups, right? Oh yeah, yep. yeah. Because there's some I swear, like I'm I'm kind of a. I like to consider myself a soup kind of sewer. Mm. Um, nonetheless, I hear about their soup all the time. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, yeah. Their beer cheese uh, rocks pretty hard. I don't know. It's kind of hard. Uh, uh, definitely one of those menus where it's hard to pick. Uh, um, I'm trying to think other things. Uh, in gems and Oshkosh. Uh, the I've recently been really impressed with the uh, culinary crew at uh, Beckett's. Um, uh, the I. The dollar menu guys, that's their that's their kind of handle, but those guys uh <laughs> put out really good uh that's that's their moniker, man. It's the it's it's fun, I like it. Uh but they uh really really give a damn and uh I haven't had a bad meal from them once. Um and uh Beckett seems to put out all kinds of crazy uh crazy stuff on the weekends. I love their vibe. Mm-hmm. I really do. Uh, their vibe is right in yep. that space. You know what I mean? Like they, they, I've never gone there and it felt like I didn't fit. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. How can you hate being on a river, listening to jazz, eating some good food, I suppose. Ooh, shout out to the jazz orgy. Yep. Yeah. Those guys, uh, yeah, those, it's never, uh, definitely see them around the bar scene a lot. You know, they're playing, <laughs> they're playing all over, you know, they, yeah. they enjoy a good libation, uh, lawnmower beers. That's, uh. That's I feel like that's usually what they're they're crushing at the Gibson is beer beer flavored beers we joke about beer flavored beers yeah I, I don't even know what to Bruh. I don't know what to say about that um I mean affectionately call them you know dad beers just your classics nothing ah. no 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 uh no frills uh not not your barrel aged barley wine crowd necessarily but um I'm trying to think what else uh other good hidden gems man um. I love this term, dad beers. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That is my term due to the fact that my my trusty go to is High Life. Dude, uh, if I mean, if you're gonna do something, drink the champagne of beers. And you know what? That sounds like a dad's beer. You know why? Because my dad drinks High Life, and it is a dad beer, uh, and it's gangster. Let's put it this way: so you things that help you. Those are the things that help you formulate your palate and your taste is things that you have around you growing up. And yeah, you're goddamn right. I was stealing high lives from my dad when I was 17 years old. <laughs> you're <laughs> damn right. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, truth be told at some point, I just basically convinced my parents that it just made more sense for them to put it on the grocery list than for me to pay 30% on top for one of my friend's brothers to buy it for me. And I was like, look, it's going to happen one way or another. So, so just know. pick up a case. Of high so life. yeah, can I get a case of high life? Like, you know, geez, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go mow the lawn now. <laughs> That's how you do it. You follow it up with a chore. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Youngsters out there, pay attention. Work smarter, not harder. Facts. Always. Facts. Always. Okay. Um, next segment. What's the cash need? Oh uh, man. So this is another one and this is just, I don't know. Kind of already mentioned it before and Oshkosh does have like great breakfast options, but I just, I just feel like there, I wish there were more, I wish there were more brunch spots. Uh, you know, like, um, uh, you know, this is, you don't, and this is just within my personal radius Sometimes it feels like you kind of get set in your own ways, um, you know, based on based on choice and whatnot. But uh, that's one thing that I just wish was a little bit a little bit more uh, variety in that, or, or more more options. Because again, it's uh, it's any it's a scene that I think that c- could be built on. Um, I you know what I like about brunch hmm. at, at this point because I've gotten older. I hate to admit it. Um, But the whole thing with the brunch part of it is it's that place where I don't want to eat a heavy dinner anymore. I'm past that point in life where I want to eat like this massive heavy dinner. I really want my heavy meal to be the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Either I want a big breakfast and a a slightly smaller lunch with a light dinner Mm -hmm. or a light breakfast with a heavy lunch 
and then a light dinner. But at the end of the day, I just don't want a heavy dinner because yeah. it doesn't look. I've gotten to the age of heartburn. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bro. yeah. I know what I'm talking about. There's a point in uh, like. If I eat after a certain uh, time period, like heartburn pops up. You know what? You know what? You know what makes me mad about heartburn? Mm. They don't pay rent. Heartburn need to leave. Like, he, why is he hanging out so long? Why you is know, he hang out all night long? Like, you need to go home, heartburn. It's hard because it's like, look, man, I want to eat food with flavor. And like, sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm going to throw a bunch of, I'm going to throw some spicy stuff on that. Facts. And, you know, uh, so it's like. <laughs> Something's got to give. Do I live boring and like just have healthy organs or do I go the other way? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> oh my um, God. That was, that was, uh, that was actually a, a, a perfect segue to one of my other things is like, I feel like this, I feel like Oshkosh could do a small plate late night kind of place. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, there's, and this is just part of, uh, one thing my wife and I would do during COVID is do road trips to like our favorite restaurants, like around the state that we could, you know, that we're serving, et cetera, that we're doing to go. Right. And, uh, one of the ones, um, that I, th- they're down in, down in Bayview in Milwaukee that, uh, we love is called the odd duck small mm-hmm. plate place. Uh, just, just an insane spot. Pre COVID was one of our favorite places. Every time we went to Milwaukee, we were either going, there or to uh, the Vanguard, which is another type, uh, another just fantastic place. Both restaurants I wish were just next to my house in Oshkosh, like I, right. you know, one on each side. But uh, I always thought a small place or a small plate type uh, scene would be pretty cool, um, just because good part of the year seems like Oshkosh is a nighttime kind of town. Yeah. Oh, um, well, yeah, that'd be sustainable. I think. Well, that's how the name Ash Vegas has come to about. Speaking of that too, and this is another thing that I think uh, what Oshkosh uh, could use. Uh, they're doing fine with regards to comedy. I'll take always more comedy, more comedy. Facts. Uh, people need to laugh more. Uh, there are so many funny people in the Fox Valley. Uh, so that's another one. And just because this is like Ben working, like, you know, going from, uh, running Calhoun beach club, uh, also working at the waters, like, uh, before that, um, uh, help him run the Ruby Owl and now like, like working at the Gibson, um, like just meeting people from all different walks of life who have all different kinds of schedules. I always wondered why Oshkosh didn't have a 24 hour bus, you know? Oh, and I don't know if they've tried it. I don't no, know if they've not. It's, I don't know if it's a thing they can't do. It's tough. Um, um and, and, know. and, I I can't get into it because that's like a whole episode. Oh, and, really? And not that I have all the answers. What mm-hmm. I will say is this: uh, you know, since now I work for a city, and and I actually have a really good working partnership with the um, with Valley Transit. Ah, um, there's it's. I know there's a lot. Tra- there's a lot in play. Transit is way more political than you ever know, and it's not mm. even at the local level. It goes up to the federal level, and there's a whole lot of things in there, and there's laws and this, that, and another. It's just complex. There's always, you know what? Here's what I want to say: when things don't work the way that you that you think would be logically good, or why don't we have it? There's usually a bunch of bureaucracy centered around it mm-hmm. to keep it from doing those things. Or that it makes it very difficult to do those things, Mm -hmm. right? And then what also comes into play, because here's the problem with stuff like that. The fact that this is a, that, that this is a, this is that the bus topic brought this up means that maybe, maybe we do need one. Uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't. I, I look, I'm all, I'm a, I am a public, intentional hop topic. I am a public transit advocate Mm -hmm. big time because I just think like, we look, I'm now I'm going to, we're going to just hit all the fire stuff and I'm going to hit the fire stuff. Sure. So, you know, you got all these people out here complaining about gas right now, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, all the people who just bought new trucks. Are they conserving gas? That's my question. Are you complaining about gas prices while riding your bike to work? No. Because I will hear those complaints then. Yes. But if you're driving your, if you're driving your, uh, your, your whatever 450 to work and complaining about gas prices, yeah. Cry me a river, bud. Come check yeah. out my tiny, wait, tiny you just, violin. Uh, wait, here's, wait, right. You just spent like, and I'm talking about the people who just bought them recently. So you just spent 40 or 50 grand on your F whatever. And then you're going to Bot- sit that's here. That's bottom price. That, dude, right. that is with r- windows. You have to roll down with your hands. Right. And so, and then you're going to complain about gas prices. Guess what? You don't get to do both. 
I'm not trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, no. You know what? Um, Now, that being said, I'm a big advocate for public transportation. Um, I think the problem that people have with it is the stigma. It's a classism thing. It's not, it's not that it's not good because it is good. It's really, really good actually. And it could affordably be done. And not only that, it, it easily would receive money from federal um, places to be able to, to, to support it. If the, if they're, if there was the need or the want or, or if we could um, justify it, right. It could be done, but it's just Oshkosh is, I've just, it's been a three shift town for a long, long, long time. Oh, and it is, it it is a three shift town. And it just, uh, that's just one thing that I always occurred to me. Like, why doesn't, you know, and again, this is, this is with no research into, uh, you know, or no aggressive research into how we would actually get this done. But when I thought about things that the Oshkosh could need that came up in my head. Yeah, no, I think it's a brilliant idea um, to help people be able to get around late nights because there's a lot of late night jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just the truth of it. And so I, I would totally support that. There's certain things that, you know, the complaints come in from those people who are like, my taxpayer dollars. Well, guess what I would support? I support those people who would need that type of transportation in those hours because guess who those are? Those are the people that support and are the foundation of the things that we love to do when we go out at night. Yep. And and that. Mm -hmm. So we should be doing the things that we can to be able to support them. So um, that's how I feel about it. Yep, I'm with you on that one, big time. All right. Um, We are moving on to the uh, Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. This is your opportunity to pick something or someone or or whatever it is. It it doesn't have to be a person. It can be whatever you want it to be. It could be an organization, a thing, a topic uh, to get placed in the Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. So I didn't even consider doing a naughty one. Um, I appreciate no one. The, I, no one ever does. I was gonna say, <laughs> like you know, like I feel like it just just that just shows a that just shows a, sp- a spiteful personality mm-hmm. of someone who could champion someone, but instead would rather rag on them. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I guess I get it, but yeah, definitely going with the hero factor. And this is tough because I don't know if there's. If there's anything I've learned as far as who your heroes should be, one thing that kind of threw a, I guess, a little splash of fresh water in my face was the uh, the Aaron Rodgers saga in the NFL this year, which I won't get into really thoroughly, but I was a little uh, let down, a little miss. I mean, it felt like I was misled in someone that I've, you know, that I've that I've appreciated uh, as a person. Um, and, uh, what, what so, made you let down? Can I ask that? Uh, I guess just, just being misled, getting, getting told, you know, I've been immunized by, by what, by, by crystals, by, by a amethyst necklace you were given. Right. You ain't know, gotta man. lie. You exactly. ain't gotta lie, you're Craig. Putting, you're, you're, you you're, ain't gotta lie. Exactly. And you're putting the whole, you're putting the whole, you're, <laughs> oh, my anchor mate. you're putting the whole, you're putting the whole station in jeopardy. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, heroes, uh, it makes you think, it makes you reassess what are heroes. Um, someone who doesn't, doesn't back off things they're passionate about. Someone that has an impact, someone that cares, someone that thinks beyond themselves. And really when it comes to that, that was a hard, like there's, there's still a lot of people on that list that show up. Um, but, uh, I guess the one that I'm picking is probably going to be, uh, I'm going with TJ Hobbs. Uh, TJ Hobbs has been a friend of mine for a long time. They're, uh, uh, just extremely compassionate, uh, supportive, caring, uh, for really all, all things. Uh, but you know, man, woman, non-binary doesn't matter. Uh, but TJ just generally kicks butt. Uh, whether it be social justice issues, um, just started a really cool business called Task Casket, where they're doing um, they're doing uh, just all kinds. That's actually a shout out here. I'm turning that into a shout out. Uh, Task Casket, it, anything you want done around your house, cleaning. If if you have a room in your house that you're like that just gives you 
PTSD thinking about it, uh, <laughs> call them. It's but. it's seriously. Uh, my wife and I, uh, admittedly, uh, we work really hard. When we get home, we're not trying to spend an extra two hours cleaning the house. Kimber, your house is amazingly clean. My house hasn't been this clean since we moved into it. <laughs> uh, I'm not joking. I don't um, get credit for this now. Uh, well, I'm saying it loud, so if your wife can hear me, yeah, credit's going where I think it probably should go. Uh, yeah. Um, but um, so yeah. Uh, but uh, TJ also started uh, Hope Fridge, which is um, going to be uh, that's a segue. Um, but a really awesome charity. That's like my that's my uh, topic of the week. If I can just go into it. Oh yeah, um, you know what? We're gonna do it this, but you know what? We're gonna do first. What? We're going to give some. Oh yeah, there you go. So yeah, TJ, T- TJ Hobbs. Uh, I wish I had your uh, your gumption and your courage, and uh, just take uh, a lot from you. So keep keep grinding. All right, and um, so and before you go into the topic of the week, there's yeah. one more thing that I need to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Man, this is great. You gotta like this. This, I mean, this is playing to my ego right now, but this is this feels like the music that should play when I walk into a room. Facts. <laughs> Everybody needs intro music. Uh, All right, top of the yes. week. Oof. Yeah, uh, Hope Fridge. Um, it's a fantastic organization uh, started by TJ Hobbs, I just mentioned. Uh, it is essentially a... Uh, uh, Locations around the Fox Valley. There are two in Oshkosh, one in Nina at the moment. I am going to give addresses here in a second. Let me dig them up. Um, but basically, you can donate um, uh, both food and household goods uh, to help those in need. Um, it's both uh, easy, effective. You are making a you're making a direct contribution to those in the area who maybe aren't as fortunate as you or I. Um, you know, not everyone has dealt the same uh, hand of cards, uh, uh, and it's sometimes it's it's hard not to uh, look down on someone in a different social situation. Um, but you, everyone's out there fighting a different fight, and um, Hope Fridge is one thing that uh, really helps. Uh, uh, I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, uh, people in the area that are uh, short on, you know, food or necessary household stuff. Um, you take it for granted. I know every, a lot of a lot of a lot of us work hard, and you know you um, you know things that things that I buy are mine, uh, kind of a thing. I, I understand that mentality, but uh, the the feeling of giving and um, being able to have a spot that's uh, local uh, that you can just drive to and like literally give to another person, not you know not in the moment, but they can come and pick it up. Um, you know, so everything from uh, canned goods, uh, make sure they're not expired, um, uh, to toothpaste, to, um, uh, body products like feminine products, uh, uh, school supplies. Um, there, there are some limits, so, you know, check them out on Facebook and see, you know, what you can and cannot donate specifically. Oh, is um, there, is there a, there's a website hey, you know what? I'm not going to ask you to uh, repeat it right now, hmm. but we're going to figure out what that website is and we will have, uh, whether it is a, fa- a Facebook page or a, a website, we will uh, make sure that we have the link in the podcast notes. And here's my thing. I'm so on board exactly with what you're talking about, Will, because here's my thing. When you're blessed, bless others. Dude, spread it out. It feels so good. I have goosebumps just talking about it right now. You know, that's just crazy, right? You know, I, I, we all get blessed and not to the same degree. Mm-hmm. But even when you're blessed a little and... and even when you're blessed a little, sometimes you have a little bit more than, than you need. Mm-hmm. Bless others. Why don't we bless others? What is that? And, and I don't like the attitude in sometimes that we have in society where it's like, well, they didn't work. Or, 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 you know, come on, man. Like, everybody has their struggles. Everybody's not blessed the same. And if you're blessed and at the end of the day, it's, it's going to sit in your basement or it's mm-hmm. going to end up getting thrown out anyway. Why not bless others? Just bless others. The thing, uh, the thing that, um, uh, you know, and if this takes another half hour, I don't care. This is a good topic, but, uh, the thing, you know, when people, a lot of these people, sometimes the people, these people that are falling on hard times are, veterans that haven't been able to make it coming back, you know, facts. I know that. And you know that, uh, I know, um, 
we were talking about Morgan Morgan earlier. That's a shout out to Morgan Ringeisen. Uh, it's my guy. I appreciate uh, his shout out on his show or in his uh, podcast. Uh, absolute men status status. I uh, appreciate you, Morgan. But um, yeah, so like you know, you don't know what these what people have been through. Uh, these could people that could be coming back. For, you know, that went went through Iraq that had substance stuff. You know, like it's everyone has dealt a different hand of cards, and if you are able to donate just a can of soup to someone and help them out right. you should do it yes uh and that's that's why hope fridge is is an awesome thing because it physically gives a spot where something like that can happen uh the uh there are two of them two of the locations are 24 7 365 uh one of them is uh right behind wagner market shout out to uh chris larson the wagner market crew uh reuben and hector uh, uh chef mike uh sarah uh, you guys are gangsters for setting this up behind your market uh, because that just that foot traffic alone where you guys are located is just flawless for that type of a, a charity. Um, so that's at 502 North Wagner, or sorry, Jesus, uh, 502 North Main Street in Oshkosh behind Wagner Market. Um, and then the other one uh, that's 24-7, 365 is at 160 Curtis Avenue in Nina. Um, it's a residence, so just don't park in their driveway or next to their garage, but um, you can donate there. And then um, in Oshkosh, uh, again, back to Oshkosh. So Oshkosh, Nina, back to Oshkosh, uh, 2837 uh, Bowman Street in Oshkosh. It's uh, inside Bowman Street repeats. So that's only open during the store's open hours. Um, But those are three spots where you can literally take an extra toothpaste or an extra deodorant or uh, colored pencils your kids never used or diapers or feminine products or anything along those lines and literally get in your car drive right now and go donate them and someone that needs them will end up with them in their hands so that's one thing that uh yeah i had that that had to be my blast was uh hope fridge because they just that's just a one-to-one impact thing that i just think just kills it's a killer idea and shout out to dj for uh for doing that oh yeah Trumpet blast, man. That's hey. another good one. I'll take a trumpet blast coming in or exiting a room. Facts. Anytime. Anytime, right? Yep. You mm-hmm. know, I'm just saying, like, that's hot <laughs> stuff. Like, I'm so big on true community. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do believe, I, I, I think the majority, and when I say majority, I don't mean, like, uh, 49, 51, I mean, like 90, 10, want to do good things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, and I think a lot of people just don't know how to, mm-hmm. you know, and so um, part of the creation of the cash is to, you know, t- let's talk to our community and say, hey, this is what we need, or these are the things that are happening, or these are how you can help. And I, I can't stress the importance of that. Like, I think a lot of us, because I have a lot of amazing, amazing people who've been blessed and they want to bless others Mm -hmm. and they may not know directly how to do it. Um, or the way they do bless others does the impact does not directly hit those who need it the most thoughts and prayers do not combat hunger unfortunately <laughs> no. um so uh, Facts, uh that's just unfortunate um that that it doesn't um wishing wishing a thing away will never fix it um and uh you know and you got to do it with the the understanding of this everybody that you're blessing is not going to do the right things and that's not the point of blessing yep you just bless mm-hmm. you bless and maybe Maybe you might have to bless them two, three, four, ten times. I'll always be thorough. But the eleventh time might be the time that it works. Mm-hmm. And if it's not hurting you, why not? Yep. Uh, you know, uh, that's one thing. Again, uh, I like just growing up. I grew up Catholic. Was confirmed Catholic. Uh, currently non practicing. Um, uh, but. The one of the things that I took away from that is just the the impact you can have with giving your time or money or goods or anything yes. to help others 
is just worth it because even if it, even if your payment is that feeling in your stomach for that next 10 minutes that's it's worth it but if it's one of those things too where down the road hey um you know if karma's real sometime you know i believe in that you know like what do you have to lose by putting as much positivity out there as as possible you know so Thanks. uh so there you go yeah wow that was a hot topic. You got anything else you want to add? Man, uh, I don't know. I just like, I mean, there's, I guess there's uh, some, are we at the, are we, are we still on topic of the week? Are we still on number eight right now? Where yeah, we? we're, yeah we're, we're still on topic of the week if, nice. you, if you choose to be. Uh, man, um, I don't know. No, I, th- I, th- I, there's probably, there's a million I could do. And if we had five hours, I'd do it. But, uh, that's, that's my, that's my pick. Hope Fridge, just, uh, look that up at him on Facebook. Uh, it's a, it's a cool community network. Oh, and that's one thing I forgot. Like, uh, people that volunteer, it's literally people that will be walking by to check on what's in the fridge, what's short, what's expired, needs to be thrown out, what, what they're, th- what they have in surplus, so it's just if you, if you want to volunteer with them too, it's just a matter of going there, spending five minutes, taking a quick inventory, a couple pictures, and then you know you're you're done and you helped. And it's uh, wow, that's small. It's red. That's the thing. It's 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 that's tiny and it's, it's it's not a big deal. It's just if you if you if you're trying to if you feel you you know trying to fill that extra little void and you got some extra things around the house that aren't expired that you, that would help another person. Just do it. Mm. Okay. Yep. Well, you know what? This is that time of the show where we're going to start winding down. How you like this? Yeah, man. I'm going to be honest with you. This is that cognac music. Oh, mm. facts. This is facts. a. How'd you know? How'd you know? Uh, certain things you just feel in your bones, you know? Yeah, this is true. Yep. All right. You got to, you know what? You got to be a grown person to know about cognac music. What I'm going to say is, y'all, thank you. Thank you, as always, for tuning in with us, uh, spending some time with us at the Kosh. Um, You know what I'm going to say? We are a work in progress. We are always trying to get better. We are always trying to improve. So I need you. You make the show, uh, the listeners out there. So take some time. Um, Please leave reviews. Um, You can leave reviews at the at the new website which is uh the kosh podcast.com uh the podcast uh podcast.com or um you can email us at ask the kosh at gmail.com ask the kosh at gmail.com and once again i'm gonna keep trying this because i want to at least do this one time we are trying to start a new segment and the new segment is ask the kosh and i have a gmail number for this so the phone number for that is and you can send in any question you want and me and the guest of that episode we're going to do our best to field that it might be a train wreck or it might be amazing we'll see um 920 Three eight five nine two nine eight. Once again, that is nine nine two zero three eight five nine two nine eight. I hope to hear from you soon. All right, and well, you know what time it is now. I mean, can I can I can I inject a little audacity real quick? Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most you call definitely. that you call that cash calls. Uh, uh, Ask the Kosh. Ask the Kosh. Ask the Ask Kosh. Kosh. Well, we, Kosh calls could work. I it, Look, it's a work in progress, so you, you think that was what we should call it? Suffice it to say, my idea is not without a hook, and that if you ever needed a co-host for that, I would lay on that knife for you. Oh, you'd be about that life? That's, uh, you know, that's you, that sounds like if you wanted to make that a full fragmentation, that could be a separate, that could be a separate show. Oh. If you got, and, if you got the content from, from like local, local contribution and you heard it here first and you know what i'm totally gonna hold will to this because if this becomes a thing this may become its own show uh if i just if i just if i just mused an extra podcast out of thin air that uh i'm not gonna be mad about that no no and i'd be all about that life hey you know and you know what we're doing that while we're still drinking um big willie style so you act you do enjoy it I'm enjoying, enjoying it. it. Uh, I can say with accuracy that I'm. Fe- I can feel it in my legs. 
Um, <laughs> it, uh, uh, I guess, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I brought it. Um, yes. Sorry. You know what? Get into it. I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to tell you. My favorite thing about um, meeting Will today is he walked in with a Bucks jersey on. He's representing, and if you know me, straight, mill, born, raised, and the Bucks being the champions. Can mm. you say that again? Because you know what? I don't feel like they get enough speck. Oh, my God. This, We're the champions. Dude, this is going to be an extra 10-minute segue. I'm sorry. You just came, You just did that. I, well, you know, um, I mean, I'm mad about that. First off, I'd like to establish this is a Ray Allen jersey, not a Giannis. Mm. Oh. That's the original 34. This is true. Uh, that's one of the biggest Wisconsin sports mistakes is trading Ray Allen. Facts. Uh, I will never get off that pulpit. Um, right. George Carl, I appreciate you as a coach, as a uh, as a maker of moves. Shame on you. Shame. Shame on you forever. Shame. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I love the Bucks. Giannis is an absolute godsend. I just I can't believe how amazing that cat is and i can't believe he's ours i don't know if he's a better person or a better basketball player and i gotta say he is a ferocious basketball player uh i could watch the guy i could watch him dunk on people all day all day um this was a, a personal uh, anecdote last year when they were going through the um uh, the playoffs Bruh. playing in the finals against the suns game five was on my birthday july 17th we're in Seattle. A bunch of my beer homies are hanging out. Uh, mm. Everyone is. Everyone's a. Excuse me. Everyone's. Uh, everyone's up in arms about you know the Bucks going that far. A friend of mine, uh, probably won't hear this, but Tor, you're out there. I hope you hear it. I'm actually going to send you the link because I talked to you about because I mentioned you. Do we give a shout out to Tori? Uh, Tor, appreciate you, bud. You're an absolute king. Um, uh, shout out to Sean too, and uh, for having me that day. But basically, uh, we just drank just. God tier beers all day and uh, watch the Bucks outside on a TV in our friend's uh, backyard. Uh, my friend Tor thought it'd be funny to bet a disgusting beer chug on the game. Uh, he took Phoenix. Foolish, foolish move, uh, which I just pounced on. Foolish. Uh, right. And it was basically <laughs> a cuvee chug of the things that we had drank that day. So mm. winner had to pick the disgusting chug for the loser. I, of course, took that. Uh, which was, that was the game that was, uh, what, closed with an exclamation point of uh, Drew Holiday, the uh, the Valley Oop, I think they're calling it, the Valley Oop. Valley Oop. Uh, yeah, the Valley Oop. Uh, Drew Holiday to Giannis, that when they should have really just ran out the clock, but that just just a uh, just ferocious dunk. Uh, yeah, so my guy Tor had to do uh, a chug that was stout and mead and IPA and... Some other atrocity, but um, yeah. So never bet against Giannis, but yep, go Bucks, Bucks and six. Uh, and I don't know, they got they got just as much of a shot this year as they did last year. Brooke Lopez coming back, facts. Uh, Grayson Allen, I wouldn't invite him to hang out at my house, but I'm glad he's on the Bucks. Facts. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, man, definitely a, a a fun swing. It's weird growing up, uh, having it be like a real Packers scene and. Uh, having things kind of swing the Bucks' way, I just couldn't be more happy about that. Whew. Yep. You know what? We needed to say that. Dude, I wasn't even pandering with this jersey. I was like... No, I, got, I didn't I, think I, you I was were like, pandering. You know what? I knew you were about that life. <laughs> I, I was like, I, uh, I was like, man, I that Ray Allen jersey just, just hanging there. I just had to put it on. Hey, mm -hmm. you were about that life. Yep. All right. You know what it's now? Now is my favorite time of the show. You know what mm -hmm. that is? Let yep. me help you out. Beep, 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 beep. It is shout out time. Nice. Yes. All right. Go on. Hey, oh, Will. Who we, we shout out, Will? Go on. Dude, this is a this is gonna be a semi long list. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? So, we, let me help you out. You yeah. know what? In black churches, they say take your time. Uh, <laughs> I I am honored uh, if I am ever invited to a church where such such a scene is happening. Mm. I will be the loudest goddamn person singing in that entire in that entire church facts um okay so shout outs a long list uh again um i'm only i'm only where i am because of the people that are in my network uh people that i've made laugh people that have made me laugh that have been there for me and vice versa um 
to thank everybody is impossible, but the ones that came up immediately, um, my wife, Abby, uh, she's the kind of person who, uh, just makes me want to be a better cat. Uh, always on an upward trajectory. Um, uh, her work with kids with autism is, uh, nothing short of heroism. If, uh, if, if, if bias weren't in play, she would have been my hero of the week. Um, but I felt like that would have been a little biased, but now I get shout out anyway. So that's just me, uh, finding a loophole. Um, but her work with, uh, Careville Autism Health, uh, they just opened a clinic right by the, uh, the arena. Um, uh, just to be able to, as far as local impact, helping local families that, um, have kids with autism, uh, Everyone that works there, everyone that works in that field, uh, your heroes. Uh, you don't you don't get enough credit that you deserve. Uh, but uh, shout out to my wife just for being a boss, uh, both literally and figuratively. Uh, shout out to Timber for having me here. Uh, I'm honored. Uh, when I think about things that have more recent honors, uh, one of them. I swear to God, is this Big Willie style barley wine from Fifth Ward? I'm gonna plug it again. Facts. Go to Fifth Ward. Uh, just support your local brewery in general. Um, we got tons in the Fox Valley. Um, just Wisconsin is a beer state. Uh, even if you don't drink, buy go buy beer for your friend who does. Um, um, and that's not like that's hard to find. No, and <laughs> this isn't even a revelation. But just support Bruh. support your local brewery in any way you can. Uh, Fifth Ward, Lions Tail. Uh man, uh, bare bones. I, I bare like bones. bones, dude. I, bare I, bones, hundred percent. Bare yes, bones had bare me bones. there for uh, comedy in November. Yes. Uh, again, oh Lyle Fox Valley comedy. Thank yes. you, Lyle. Um, but uh, yeah, support your local brewery. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, I already mentioned Lyle. Uh, thank you, Lyle. Uh, Morgan, thank you for the shout out. Uh, shout out to everybody who has ever I've ever made a drink for who's ever come back cuz I made him laugh uh you know you're the, you're you're the real you're the real deal um uh people like uh people like uh my first job at the waters uh Bill and Beth Wyman Kim Price uh the OG Waters crew uh working at CBC's Tom Taggart Chad Rafinski uh that whole gang um uh uh the Ruby Owl uh, Adam Carlson, uh, John and Julie, uh, Cam, uh, just, I don't know. Oshkosh has been really good to me. And, you know, Ruby Owls, when I think of things that I'm most proud of, uh, just helping, helping make that place as badass as it is, is, uh, is great. And I mean, as a beer nut working at a place with 30 taps and, a just a Gringot seller of beers is not, not a bad scene. Um, and, uh, you know, the current venture working at the Gibson social club, um, it's a great events facility, uh, you know, weddings, uh, bookings are going nuts. Um, 2024 is not open yet, but, uh, just doing tours all the time. Um, uh, Kristen and Eric Koopman for, I guess, for the opportunity, uh, you guys are rad, uh, as far as local people that, that, that give a damn, you know, you, Oshkosh could do much worse. Uh, but the Hootmans are rad. Uh, Kristen and Jesse, uh, yeah, just old Gibson crew. Uh, Oshkosh, uh, as an events facility, uh, or as an event city, working in an events facility uh, is 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 pretty prime and pretty great. And uh, it's uh, just cool uh, being able to have that local impact. And, dude, my commute is 200 yards. Like, I, I could cartwheel to work if I wanted to. Like, it's 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 pretty sweet scene, so... Um, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good for shout outs. If you're, if you, if you just spent an hour, if you just spent an hour and 20 minutes, listening to me and Timber talk, I uh, thank you too. That's, that's, that's more investment than I would have expected. So nah, cheers, y'all. Man. Cheers. The cash is real here. Yep. You know what? <laughs> that there. Let me just say this. That is how you do a shout out. That there is is shout out at its finest. And that felt good. Yeah, man. Honestly, I was a little nervous about this morning. Uh and I had I had some other notes that there's probably a couple things that I forgot here for my initial notes, but yeah, just a cool scene and yeah, just honored to to come and hang. Yeah, no. Nah, it's been good, man. Big Willie style. Yep, that's dude. That Thanks. is one hundred percent. That's the that's the beer. That's the philosophy. Barley wine is life, dude. 
All right. My shout outs. I'm going to, you know what? I usually, since I get an opportunity to do shout outs all the time, I'm going to keep my shout outs short and simple. And my main shout out is going to go to the UW Oshkosh men's basketball team and women's basketball team. And, but I got to give a special shout out to coach Lewis. Um, you know what? We lost uh, last night, which, oh, it hurt my feelings because, you know, I was so sure, you know, you can never be sure anything can happen. But we lost kind of in the last seconds of uh, of it all. I thought we were going on to uh, further an attorney, uh, but it just didn't work out that way. But you know what, though? Good people. Yep. Love UW Oshkosh. Didn't get there by accident. We No. No, not nah, and there's great leaders, great leaders up and down that I'd like to shout out all the leaders, uh, all the way from the chancellor to our athletics director, uh, you know, Daryl Sims, you the man, Daryl, you know what, and um, just the people overall. We are so lucky to have such an institution in in our city um, that adds on all sorts of levels that I don't think a lot of people understand. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I literally wouldn't be in Oshkosh if it weren't for UWO, and um, yeah, I'm certainly thankful for that type of, uh, this type of town. All right, so we are at the very last thing, and you mm. know what that is? That is the parting words of wisdom. So, Will, what do you have? Man, uh, to, I don't know, like anything, I guess I've mentioned this a couple times, but it's always hard to narrow down stuff like that, and you know, not to be pontificating or bloviating but just always just make connections build bridges build friendships uh the 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 distances you can travel with with uh a few uh a few positive words or a favor to um uh only a positive move um so yeah just always uh be be looking out to try and uh expand the network and uh, just kind of um, I don't know. Help out however you can, I suppose. Facts. I don't know. Sport of sport of I guess uh, wandering wisdom there, but I'll take it. Oh, I think it's appropriate. Nice. Yeah. All right, Will. I just want you to know this was fire, baby. Yeah, dude. That was a that's a hell of a way to spend part of a Sunday. I'm uh, gonna go home and probably uh, set a very low step count for the day. <laughs> Maybe a hundred, maybe 150 steps. Facts. Yep. Uh, the cash. 